Hello everyone and welcome to Barca News. It's October 8th, 2022 and Barcelona are reporting an increase in ticket sales, revenue and stadium attendance. Also, Manchester United's defender Diogo Dalo has been linked with Barcelona and it's been reported that Javi Galán was Xavi's number one options to reinforce the left back position. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Hello everyone, we begin with the news that the team are undergoing preparation for their La next La Liga match against Celta Vigo that will take place tomorrow, Sunday, October 9th at the Spotify Camp Now. Now it's expected that Xavi is going to have a lot of rotations on the team given that Barcelona have two crucial matches up this upcoming week. The first one being against Inter Milan that the team are going to have to win if they want to have a shot at qualifying into their next round. And the second match is against Real Madrid on Sunday that Barcelona are also forced to win if they want to maintain the leadership of the Spanish league. Now Barcelona have released the name of the players that have been called up for this match and those players are Marc Ter Stegen, Gerard Piquet, Sergio Busquets, Osman Dembélé, Pedri, Robert Lewandowski, Ansu Fati, Ferran Torres, Marcos Alonso, Jordi Alba, Sergi Roberto, Frankie de Jong, Rafinha, Eric Garcia, Iñaki Peña, Valde, Marc Casado, Gavi, Pablo Torre, Shad Riyad, and Arnau Tenas. Now Frankie de Jong has been included in the team after recovering from the injury that he picked up during international break and Marc Casado has once again been included with the first team given that he can play in the right back position and since Hector Bellerin, Ronald Araujo and Jules Koundé are all injured. Now as expected, Xabi has included Shadriad with the first team and Shadriad is a very talented center back that currently plays with Barca Athletic given that Barcelona only have two healthy center backs left which are, which are Eric Garcia and Gerard Piquet. Now it's reported that Xabi could be giving Pablo Torres some playing minutes during tomorrow's match given that the young midfielder has only featured once with the first team when he came, off, came on as a substitute in the Champions League match against Victoria Pilsen. Now it's also reported that Xabi will be playing Rafinha on the right side since he played him on the left side as a false interior against Inter Milan and not only is Rafinha not used to playing on the left side but he's also not used to playing as an interior so as a result the Brazilian player did not have much uh, protagonism in that Champions League match against Inter Milan. Now it's also reported that Xabi has instructed Rafinha to be more selfish and not to worry so much about passes and instead to focus on creating space and taking shots in order to increase his chances of scoring goals which is something that Rafinha has shown in the past to be very good at doing. Now before we continue with the news, if you are enjoying the content of this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Not only is it free to do so, but in doing so you would be helping this small and humble channel continue to grow. Now with YouTube's latest update to their algorithm, liking a video goes a long way in YouTube recommending this video to other people, which would extend the reach of this small channel. Now on to the news that Barcelona have announced that stadium attendance, ticket sales and revenues are all up across the club and they're also actually higher than what the pre-pandemic levels were. Now Barcelona have announced that attendance at stadiums is up by 19%. Now last season's average attendance was 55,026 people with the highest being 86,422 people which was against uh, Real Madrid and El Clasico. Now Barcelona have also announced that prior to COVID-19 the average attendance was 68,691 spectators. And so far in this season the average attendance has been 81,890 people per game, which represents a 19% increase, which is an average of 13,199 spectators more each game. Barcelona have also announced that ticket sales are up 46%, and that these good figures confirm both the appeal of Xabi's 2022-2023 version of Barca, and also the effectiveness of new sales strategies such as the policy to include promotions and discounts of up to 50% on the total price to make it more affordable for residents of Catalonia and non-season ticket holders and also to the online content and marketing campaigns that Barcelona has initiated in order to increase ticket sales. Now the club have also announced that despite reducing ticket prices uh, in order to drive more ticket sales, revenues are still up by 18%. Now this is a big testament to the great job that Juan Laporta and his board of directors are currently doing, where not only have they rebuilt the team 
but with all the new signings which has drove the interest of Barcelona fans to pack up the Spotify camp now but they're also increasing the revenues of the club and given the financial situation of Barcelona this is great news because we now need as much money as possible in order to come out of the financial hole that Josep Maria Bartomeu placed us in. Now speaking of the club finances Barcelona are still looking for a sponsor to feature on the Barcelona jersey sleeve. Now as I reported over the summer, the cryptocurrency exchange platform YBIT offered Barcelona 20 million euros in order to feature on the Barcelona jersey sleeve. Now Barcelona have not pulled the trigger on the sponsorship because they don't know much about this white bit company so they're not very sure about uh, whether they have it on the jersey. However, they are keeping the sponsorship as a last minute option. Now the car company Cupra has offered Barcelona to be the sponsor and to feature on the Barcelona jersey sleeve and they are willing to do it if the club are willing to give them a good offer since Cupra are already a Barcelona sponsor. Now on to the news that more details have been revealed about the agreement that Barcelona have reached with Atletico de Madrid for the sale of Antoine Griezmann. Now as I reported previously, Barcelona have reached an agreement with Atletico de Madrid for the sale of the French player, given that the Madrid-based club were restricting the player's minutes because they didn't want to trigger uh, the clause that would have forced Atletico de Madrid to pay Barcelona 40 million euros for Antoine Griezmann. Now the club had initially considered taking Atletico de Madrid to court for what they were doing. However, they decided that they don't want to uh, go to court and they want to avoid prolonging this ordeal even longer. So they have decided to sell Antoine Griezmann to Atletico de Madrid. Now it's reported that Barcelona have agreed to sell Antoine Griezmann for 20 million euros plus 4 million euros in variables. Now 2 millions out of these 4 million variables are very easy uh, to be met and they depend on minutes and matches played. However, the other 2 million euros are a little bit more difficult to accomplish, but if they are, then Barcelona will be looking to make 24 million euros off the sale of the French player. Now, the contract has yet to be signed by all the parties, but it's reported that once this contract is finalized and all the parties uh, sign it, the Barcelona will be able to remove 40 million euros off their wage bill, which is, of course, great news because Barcelona are looking to reduce their the huge wage bill that Josep Maria Bartomeu left us with. Now, on to the news that Manchester United's defender, Diogo Dalo, has been linked with a possible transfer to Barcelona. Now, Diogo Dalo is a 23-year-old right back who currently plays at Manchester United. However, the player is on his way out of Manchester United, so as a result, he has been linked with Barcelona, and it's reported that the club are keeping uh, tabs on Dalot, given that they're looking to make a big signing next summer in order to reinforce the right back position. Now, not many sources have confirmed this report, so I would take this report with a grain of salt. And more so given that Diogo Dalot is on his way out of the Premier League club given that he hasn't had much success with Manchester United with all of his defensive mistakes. Now it's a little bit difficult to believe that Barcelona are looking to sign Diego Dalot who has not made it at Manchester United in the state that they're currently at. And it's even more difficult to believe given that Barcelona are looking for a strong defensive right back in order to reinforce the right back position. Now as I reported in yesterday's video, which I will leave the link for down below in the description in case you want to check it out, it was reported that Barcelona are considering signing Inigo Martinez over the winter break in order to reinforce the defense given that three of the center Barcelona center backs are currently injured. Now it's now being reported that Barcelona are not looking to sign Inigo Martinez over the winter break given that his contract will expire with Athletic de Bilbao uh, in the summer of 2023 and if they're going to sign him it would be over the summer because he would be arriving in Barcelona as a free agent. Now, Barcelona attempted to sign Inigo Martinez several years ago however those negotiations fell through at the last minute to the annoyance of uh, Ernesto Valverde and the club also considered signing Inigo Martinez over this summer however they decided to sign Andreas Christensen and Jules Koundé instead. Now whether Barcelona signs Inigo Martinez this winter or next summer I'm still of the same opinion which I don't understand why Barcelona would want to sign a 31 year old center back who's had a lot of injury problems when they can uh, look to solve their problem by going to La Masia or a Barca Atleti, especially Shad Riyad, who's only 19 years old and who could be more of a long-term solution instead of signing Inigo Martinez and then having to sign a replacement for him in another two or three years. Now on to the news that it's been reported that it was Javi Galan who was Xavi's number one option in order to reinforce the left-back position. 
Now, Javi Galan is a 27-year-old left back who currently plays at Celta Vigo, and it's reported that Barcelona were very close to finalizing the transfer of the player over this past summer. However, those negotiations fell through because Celta Vigo were asking uh, for uh, 10 to 15 million euros for Javi Galan, and Barcelona were only willing to pay around 7 million euros. Now, as a result of these negotiations falling through, and Barcelona opted for signing Marcos Alonso from Chelsea. Now, we will end today's video with the news that Luis Suarez has given a very interesting interview where he has spoken about his relationship with Lionel Messi and Neymar, and he has also spoken about his exit out of Barcelona. Now, in regards to his relationship with Lionel Messi and Neymar, Luis Suarez said, Leo is a friend and a special friend because of what he means to my career, and I think we help each other. When I arrived at Barcelona, I told Leo that I was coming to win, not to take the place of anyone. He realized that what I was telling him was sincere, and the relationship grew. Now further talking about the understanding between him, Messi, and Neymar, Suarez added, Messi and Neymar made me win a golden boot. Leo let me kick penalties so that I could win the award, and also they were always looking for me on the field. I value that very much. There was no ego. The three of us were happy and the rest of the team ran for us because they realized that. Now when talking about his exit out of Barcelona, Luis Suarez said, it hurt and we suffered a lot. We came from the elimination in the Champions League against Bayern Munich and Leo's Burofax. Everything was very complicated and painful. Firstly because of the way things went and also because of the way we were treated. I went, I showed up to train and they sent me to train separately. I suffered a lot and came home and cried because of how they had treated me. It hurt me. It was also a message that they wanted to leave Leo alone, separate him. We had a bad time. In the years I was at Barcelona, I never dropped below 25 goals per season. We had a bad time. Leo suffered a lot. I had never seen Messi cry like I saw him cry at Barcelona. It hurt him. I always had the uncertainty as to why it all happened. But then luckily, I was happy at Atletico Madrid. And these are very interesting statements by Luis Suarez who recalled the good times when he played with Lionel Messi and Neymar, who in my opinion are the best attacking trio in the entire history of football. But the more important statements are that Luis Suarez seems to uh, suggest that Barcelona separated him during trainings because they were looking to isolate Lionel Messi. Now, I'm not sure if this was Jose Maria Bartomeu doing this on purpose because he was looking to isolate Lionel Messi and get rid of him, or if this was Bartomeu isolating Lionel Messi in order to dilute Messi's power in the locker room, or whether this was just the team isolating Luis Suarez from the rest because they didn't believe that he was at the same level as the rest of the team. Now, I do believe that uh, Luis Suarez's departure what came at the right time because his performance had declined. However, I don't believe that it was uh, handled the right way. I believe that the club mistreated him badly and no player deserves to be mistreated that way, especially a legend like Luis Suarez, who all he did was score goals for Barcelona and help the team achieve a lot of trophies, including a Trebel. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like. Also, I'd like to invite all of you to please leave a comment down below, giving me all your thoughts and opinions about all the news that I share with you. And finally, I would like to invite all of you to please subscribe to the channel so you can stay current on all the latest news in regards to our beloved club, FC Barcelona. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video, and as always, Pisca Barça.